The in-person signer is great for a couple things. One, your client doesn't want to remote sign using AuthentiSign through their email, and two, your client is in your office. Go to Transactions, choose the transaction you're working on, then click the AuthentiSign tab. Choose your transaction, then we'll go through the steps. Under Participants, click Add. Add new participant. Change the type from Remote Signer to In-Person Signer. Then type in their name. The host email is going to be your email, not the signers. So not John Smith's, but you the agent. The signing host pin is the number that you assign yourself that only you know. This is how it authenticates it. For simplicity's sake of this video, I'm going to use 1234. Choose the role of your signer, John Smith. If he's the buyer, choose buyer. If he's the seller, choose seller, etc. You can click Add, or if there's going to be more than one signer, you would click Add Another. Move on over to Documents, and we'll choose the form from our transaction. Choose the form that you need signed, and click Add. Here's the system layout mappings. You have not assigned the signers to required roles. Please use the drop down list on the right to assign the roles to the participants listed on the left. So if you had more than one buyer, you would choose all their names here. Uh, buyer 1 is John Smith, so I'm going to hit save. If you have more forms that you need signed, you would click add and you can add however many forms. Moving on to the design, this is where you can choose to drag and drop your signature. Okay, so the buyer's signature, you can see that right here. John Smith, you're going to drag and drop. Same with the date. The date's going to go over here. As soon as you're done drag and dropping the signatures, you're going to hit next. And then send invitations. OK. Remember you entered in your email under the host email, so you will be emailed the signing invitation. Click here to sign. Then it will bring you to this screen. These are the steps you will need to follow. Provide John Smith with control of the device to be used for signing tablet, mouse, and or keyboard, etc. Support John Smith in creating their signing identity. Create signature, add email address, and accept. Step number three, guide John Smith through the signing process. And number four, when they have finished and accepted the signing, enter your signing host pin to finalize and conclude the signing session. Click continue. If you're using your cell phone, hand it over to your signer and guide him through this process. If it's your computer, you can have him sit at your chair and help him as well. So have John Smith enter in his email address. And he can either sign his name using the mouse or select a font style. If he wants to use ink, he'll click on Instant Ink and sign his name. If he doesn't like it, he can hit clear and do it again and hit next when he's finished. Then it'll ask him to draw his initials. So let's say John Smith. Adopt signature and enters that in. If they decide that they don't want to sign their name, they can go to select font style and choose from the options below and click save. Then he'll create his password. He needs to agree to the terms and conditions in the disclosures. I agree. I agree. Then click confirm and accept. Tell him to click start. It will bring him down to where he needs to sign. For him to sign, he needs to click on his name. It will change to a signature that he adopted and automatically change the date to today's date. If there's more signatures, you will see a next button. Otherwise, click complete and complete signing. Your portion of the signing is now complete. Pass control of the device back to the host, which is you the agent. OK. This is where you're going to input your signing host pin that only you know. And remember, for simplicity's sake, we did one, two, three, four, and click complete. And that's all there is to it. Great job, guys. I hope this helps.